Hey guys, this is Leslie and you're watching Midlife and Nailing It. Today I have for you a what's for dinner video. I post one of these every Monday. This is the week of January 12th. In this video, I'll be showing you four of the meals that we had. On Monday, we had barbecue sandwiches and then we had leftovers Tuesday. Wednesday, we had burritos. Thursday, we had nachos. On Saturday, we had an egg bake, and on Sunday, we had soup. For the barbecue sandwiches that I made, I used my crock pot, and I'm using this salt that my sister got me in a gift basket uh, for Christmas. It's a pink salt and garlic grinder, um, and then, of course, black pepper. I'm using a pork roast, and I went ahead and already got that salt and pepper on, and then I'm using a couple of scoops of brown sugar. I also peeled and sliced up an onion to throw into the crock pot. It was about now that I realized I did not have any barbecue sauce, so I had to send my husband to the grocery store. He returned with Guy Fiera's Carolina's sauce. Uh, we had never had this before or any barbecue sauce from him. It was pretty good. Um, I don't know that I like it for a barbecue sandwich because it is very thin I will say that but for grilling I can see where this would be super good uh, but anyways that's the sauce that we used and as usual I'm using a crock pot liner here so I just layered all of the ingredients inside my crock pot and then I poured my barbecue sauce on top this cooked on high for about five hours you could very easily cook this on low as well for all day, like if you're at work or something. So this is what my barbecue pork looked like when it was done. Like I said, the sauce we used was a thinner sauce, but it was still super good. And I just shredded it with my forks. That's in fact how you know your pork or your beef or whatever you have in your crock pot is done is when it falls apart with two forks and easily shreds. So this is what that meal looked like plated up. I used the brioche buns from Aldi. And then my husband, while he got the barbecue sauce, picked up some coleslaw and beans. I had other plans for sides, but what are you going to do? So those were already made. They were from the deli at our grocery store. So next up, I decided to make some easy burritos. I go ahead and brown up two pounds of hamburger and I'm adding taco seasoning as directed. I actually make a lot of filling here because I'm wanting to use that filling for something else the next day. I was not feeling well again. Um, this is the second time I've been sick since January 1st. Uh, this one I can luckily just pop whatever and keep moving for the most part. Uh, so yeah, I was kind of being lazy and I just thought I would double up and have an easier time at making dinner the next night. I do that sometimes. The cool thing about making burritos is you can grab anything out of your pantry and stuff them with it. So I had a couple of the Spanish style Uncle Ben's rice. So I cooked those up and added them to my taco meat. I've added corn before, I've added black beans, jalapenos, I don't know, those green chilies, whatever you've got on hand, you can just throw into your meat, bulk it up. <laughs> so I make sure my oven is heated at 350. I've got my rice here, which I do eventually add to the meat and just mix it together to add to my burritos, but at first I was layering uh, the ingredients. And then of course, there's my taco meat. And then this is our new favorite cheese to use. It's called, it's from our family. It's thick blend, uh, thick Mexican blend cheese. It is super good, you guys. And they have it at our specialty uh, grocery store by our house. Let me know if you guys have that, if you've ever seen it. And then, of course, I've got aluminum foil. I have a sheet per burrito and my tortilla shells. And I'm getting ready to put them together. So all I did here was layer the rice, meat, and cheese. And then I just rolled my burrito up and I'm gonna wrap that aluminum foil around the burrito. Once I get them all rolled up, I'll just throw them in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. So these are my daughter's burritos. All she has in there is 
cheese. I just wanted to show you that when you do something like this, it's easy to modify per family member. And then these are our burritos when they are finished. We ended up with a lot of leftovers here, so it makes quite a few. On the side, we had some sour cream and then just some Kroger salsa or whatever salsa you have on hand would work. And then I put out some taco sauce. Um, we love the Trader Joe's spicy taco sauce if you haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so this is what that meal looked like plated up. It is so good when you do burritos this way. The aluminum foil just steams them and makes the shells taste so good and melts everything perfectly. This was super good and everyone in the family loved it. So for the next night, I just went ahead and grabbed some tortilla chips. I'm actually using um, some that are homemade from our specialty grocery store. And I just threw the leftover meat and rice mixture. And then I had some of that cowboy caviar salsa from Trader Joe's that has the beans and the corn and it's so delicious. And I just threw that all on top and then I sprinkled cheese on top. Um, and then that's my daughter's nacho. She just likes cheese. I just put them in a 350 degree oven and cooked them until all the cheese was melted. And that was about it. I served it with salsa and taco sauce and some sour cream. So yeah, I got out of this meal pretty easy and it is so very good. I just want to add real quick because this whole time I've been saying it was two pounds of ground beef for yesterday and today. Uh, the meals, no, that was turkey. You could use ground beef, but we use turkey, and I'm just going to insert that here. So for my egg bake, I am just browning up some bacon that I cut up uh, small. Once the bacon is browned up, I go ahead and transfer that to a plate with paper towel on it. And then I add my onion, as well as a green pepper and red pepper that I diced up. So you just want to cook that up enough to soften the onion and peppers slightly. While that's cooking, you want to crack 12 eggs and uh, get them into a large mixing bowl. To that, you add one cup of milk as well as salt and pepper to taste, and then you whisk all of that together. To your egg mixture, you wanna add three cups of the frozen, um, you could either use the O'Brien or the regular potatoes. Next, you want to add your onion and peppers. Then you want to add about three-fourths of the bacon that you made. Next, you're going to add about a cup of cheese. So I use my lasagna pan for this. Uh, I suppose you could use any casserole dish you wanted. And I sprayed it with some cooking spray. And I went ahead and poured my egg mixture in. And I also smoothed it all out with a spoon. I then sprinkled the top of my egg bake with bacon and then I came through and sprinkled a little bit of cheese on top. I put the egg bake in a 350 degree oven for 40 minutes and then actually I think it only cooked for about 35 minutes. I pulled it at that time so you're going to want to watch it uh, and then you're going to want to let it rest for 10 minutes before you slice it up. This is what the egg bake looked like sliced up and plated. It was, oh my gosh, so good. And I imagine you could use this ratio and put any veggies or anything. You could use sausage or whatever you wanted for uh, this egg bake. So I hope that everyone is having a great week and that you enjoyed these meals. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.